This is a short video demonstrating the scanning electron microscope that I have in my living room. It's a GLJSM T200 from the beginning of the 1980s, making it more than 30 years old. I start the microscope by pushing the start button over here. This starts with two pumps, one rough vacuum pump and one high vacuum diffusion pump. The diffusion pump requires some 15 minutes to heat up before it's operational. And before that, it's not possible to turn on the electron beam. In the meanwhile, I can then prepare and insert the sample to observe. In this case, I've chosen a very small light bulb filament from a small flashlight. It's hard to see even when using the macro lens on the camera. It's much thinner than the human hair. To insert the sample into the chamber, first you need to vent the chamber by pressing this button. This closes several valves to the vacuum pumps and air is introduced slowly into the chamber. There is nothing holding the chamber door in place except the atmospheric pressure during normal operation, so it can be opened by hand when the pressure is as equalized. The sample stub is then inserted into one of the sample holders and is firmly fastened with two set screws. This sample holder allows for both rotation and tilt, in addition to just being moved in the x and y direction, as I'm showing here. Pumping vacuum in the chamber is then achieved by closing the door and keeping it shut by hand while pressing the pump down button. Now when the diffusion pump is already warmed up, it only takes about 2 minutes to reach the high vacuum required to operate the microscope. The microscope is ready when the magnification display lights up, in this case showing 35 times magnification, which is the lowest setting at this working distance. In order to start the electron beam inside the microscope, the high voltage is turned on, following by a slow ramp of the filament heating voltage. When the brightness just reaches the second peak in intensity, the filament is properly saturated and the image can be turned on. Now the spiral shaped filament is clearly seen and the magnification can easily be turned up to a few thousand times with just small adjustments to the focus, brightness and contrast. For high resolution images, more care has to be taken when mounting the sample to prevent vibrations. One also needs to optimize the optics in the microscope by correcting for astigmatism in the lenses. At the top of this small picture, a histogram is shown. This is very similar to the histogram you can see on your digital camera or in software like Photoshop for example. This gives the operator a measurement of how bright the picture is and if the contrast needs to be adjusted. The image can be displayed in different sizes on the screen in order to more easily adjust the focus and to preview how the final picture will look like. In order to save this high quality image, the sample is scanned over a much longer period of time, around 1-2 to two minutes. 
Since the screen is monochromatic, the resolution of the picture is only determined by the sharpness of the dot and the amount of lines that are scanned. So traditionally, images were captured by using a long shutter time Polaroid camera aimed at the screen. But this can easily be made with a more modern DSLR for example. At the end of the frame, some type of primitive logic actually prints a scale bar and information about the frame on the picture. This includes the size of the scale bar, the accelerating voltage and the working distance used, and finally a frame ID number. Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below.